Good morning everybody. It's such a pleasure to share with you today because I've enjoyed very much the teaching over the last few weeks on Psalms. Um, my, my husband always loves the Psalms and uh, when I very first was engaged to him he'd bring me every night and read me a Psalm. And at that stage I was a very new Christian so this was a, a really new idea. So I've got to love them myself but uh, um, I was reminded straight away of this book by Jonathan Aitken, who um, he wrote a book for Psalms for, for people under pressure. And uh, I read it a few years ago. You probably, some of you will have known about it, but um, he, he was um, a war correspondent, a TV presenter, uh, chairman of the City of London Merchant Bank and an MP for 23 years. And he was caught telling a lie under oath and he lost absolutely everything. He lost his wife, he lost his money, he lost his reputation completely and was committed to 18 months in Belmarsh prison, which is one of the toughest prisons. If you could imagine how horrific that was for him. And on the, as he went, to go into prison, a friend slipped into his top pocket praying the Psalms and when he was searched they didn't take it away, they said you can keep that. And um, that very first night when the other prisoners were taunting him and telling him what they'd do with him the next day and, and he was so fearful and frightened and shamed, um, he started reading the Psalms and started with Psalm 130 which of course is out of the depths I cry to you and that's exactly where he was in the depths and it finally brought him relief by the morning and um, wonderfully he um, he started a series of Bible studies in the prison and uh, prisoners came to the Lord they they learned more about Jesus and um, he, by the time he left, quite a few had come to the Lord. He then went on to Wycliffe and he now is a lecturer and he writes books. So this is the, this is the impact that the Psalms, the way he described them and he said These, this wonderful Hebrew poetry was written for the people of the first millennia and yet many of the situations they faced then, we face now which is why he wrote the book Psalms for People Under Pressure. Um, and the, these last few weeks I've found how valid that is as I've read Psalm 5. I'm just going to read it again now. I know it has been written up. Um, <clears throat> right, this is Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my sign. Listen to my cry for help, my King and my God. For to you I pray. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait in expectation. And that's quite key, the fact that the morning, before we start anything, we bring everything to the Lord. And then to expect an answer. So often we pray and we don't, ex we don't look for the answer. Um, and then it goes on with four, uh, three, three verses about... Um, his, his opinion of the wicked, which I won't go into, but you are not a God who takes pleasure in evil. With you the wicked cannot dwell. The arrogant cannot stand in your presence. You hate all who do wrong. You destroy those who tell lies. Bloodthirsty and deceitful men the Lord abhors. But I, by your great mercy, will come to your house. In reverence will I bow down towards your holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies and make straight your way before me. Not a word from their mouth can be trusted. Their heart is filled with destruction. Their throat is an open grave. With their tongue they speak deceit. Declare them guilty, O Lord. Let their intrigues be their downfall. Banish them for their many sins, for they have rebelled against you. The God of righteousness does not like wickedness and in all his psalms this is quite a theme. 
And then there's a lovely last one. <clears throat> but let all who take refuge in you be glad. <clears throat> let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. For surely, O Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favour as with a shield. Lovely, lovely words in that. You could just take that, that particular verse and just dwell in it. All the treasures, refuge, joy, protection, the, uh, a shield to be surrounded with his favour as with a shield. It's just, just a lovely, lovely psalm. And it, the, the psalms particularly came to, to life for Libby when she was taken um, into um, Southampton Hospital with a very unexpected and traumatic brain bleed. So it was very, very dramatic and very tense for us all at that time. And um, when she was reaching out to God, he gave her a poem. And the very end of the poem says this. No one is an island, they say, but aren't we all, in the end, an island? Except I lie here, turn on worship music, and within seconds... The walls open out for me and I feel the peace of Jesus. There's no place that can separate me from the love of God and when the time comes, not even death. For, for Libby, it was a very treasured time with God because she was in, in a lot of trauma and I just thank the Lord that he, he, he reached out to her at that specific time and gave her this comfort. Um, <clears throat> The last verse is worth claiming over and over for ourselves because, as I mentioned, it's a promise of joy and blessing and shelter and protection. And um, in the, um, uh, as far as protection is concerned, I just want to tell you one story that's very special for our family, and it's called the Spear God. Um, Ron's father was a missionary doctor in the Sudan for 45 years. And on one occasion, and this was written up in a very ancient piece of parchment that I have here, um, <clears throat> on one occasion a man came and knocked at, the front, uh, knocked at the door of his hut and said, quick, come, my, my daughter's fallen in the, um, in the fire and is very badly burnt. He said, I will come, but I need to look at the ones that are here already. So when he was finished, he got on his iron donkey which was his bike, and start biking towards the village of Pagwat. As he approached the village, he heard a lion roar. He got off his bike. He thought, what will I do? Lord, if I don't go, that little girl's going to die. What would you have me do? And he remembered that in Amos, it said, does the lion roar when it has no prey? Now, you have to think about that, really. <laughs> the lion doesn't roar when he's stalking his prey he roars when he's found it and he's triumphant and he's roaring so he continued on and uh, the, when he got there the leader said uh, he, he looked after the little girl and then the leader said but why are you traveling without any spear or any protection he said I have a God who protects me and they called him the spear God and so from that time on, in, when they were telling stories around the fire at night, they'd talk about this amazing missionary doctor whose God was a spear God. All right, I'll leave you with that, but that's a very special um, uh, story about God's protection that we can all claim. Thank you.